good. How you doing? Doing good. Thank good. You, sir. All right. We got a visitor center just ahead. Cool. Have a great day. All right. You too. Thank Thanks. you. All right, Regan Outdoors here. Just made it to Petrified National Forest at the visitor center area, and it looks like there's a little pathway, like a mini hike or something. I'm gonna go check it out and see what we find. Okay, so there's a lot of petrified wood up here, obviously. We're gonna go check it out. Petrified National Park, often referred to in short as Petrified National Forest, or simply Petrified Forest, is a national park located 18 miles east of the town of Holbrook in northern Arizona. It consists of a point-to-point -point drive, offering numerous stops along the way. This first stop is known as Rainbow Forest. The petrification process occurs over millions of years. Uh, this whole thing was underwater, and eventually the wood gets replaced by minerals and becomes a rock, which is what this is. Built in the 1930s, it served as the park's main entrance for a number of years and is still the main attraction when it comes to seeing large chunks of petrified wood. The trail system behind the buildings is a small loop and was designed to keep visitors within the watchful eye of park rangers in an effort to prevent the theft of petrified wood. Alright, that was only stop number one. There's a lot more stops, so head back to the car and uh, head out and see what else we find. So this was uh, not even really an official stop. This is just a really beautiful overlook kind of area that uh, is right on the side of the road here. And there's a lot of these. There's a ton of beautiful stops. Alright, we stopped at uh, Crystal Forest. Let's go check it out. Crystal Forest is a 0.9 mile trail that showcases some of the most colorful petrified wood in the entire park. Around 225 million years ago, northern Arizona was a densely wooded tropical floodplain. The flooding and erosion combined with volcanic activity were the perfect mixture for beautiful quartz petrification exhibited here. Over time, silica from volcanic ash found its way into buried logs, replacing the organic matter with quartz crystals. So that's just pretty much a mountain of petrified wood right there. The colors in the quartz are derived from impurities such as iron, carbon, and manganese. I came during a weekday. It's uh, August right now, early August. I came during a weekday, so there's a lot less people than I thought there would be, because it's still kind of tourist season. It's still the summer. I also notice even if there's a you know, half mile hiking path, if you just get off at a quarter mile, you're pretty much by yourself. Most of the tourists stay to the very uh, start of the path. So that's nice. made it to Jasper Forest. It's a little windy, so I'm not sure if the audio will pick up. Uh, looks like it's just a pretty scenic, beautiful overlook. I'm really impressed. Wow, look at that. Jasper Forest offers both an overlook and a hiking trail. Overlooking a petrified forest below, visitors who don't want to hike the 2.6 mile trail are treated to stunning panoramic views. Very cool raven. Check that out. Off you go. On my way out, I spotted a raven, one of my favorite birds. Of course, this meant a quick detour to say hi. Can we hang out? The common raven is one of the smartest animals, playful in nature, and good around people. I decided to see how close I could get before it flew off. Ravens have been known to make toys out of sticks, golf balls, and anything else that looks entertaining. They have reasoning skills that rival both dolphins and monkeys, and their problem-solving skills are highly sophisticated. Fortunately for me, my little friend let me get within three feet, as he sensed I didn't pose a threat. However, when someone came up behind me and was about 20 feet away, he flew off. Named for their cone-shaped structure resembling Native American dwellings, the teepees date back about 225 million years. Erosion showcases the different layers of mudstone and minerals deposited over time. This is crazy. I made it to a place called the teepees. Um, Probably has something to do with the pointed rock shapes over there, obviously. Really cool. Just 
This is just so pretty. This is just amazing. Like, it's probably my favorite stop. I love the petrified wood, but the painted cliff sides are something else. Obviously, they're gonna look much better in person, but hopefully they still look good on camera. Facing away from the wind, so hopefully the uh, mic will pick up the audio, but I drove a little closer to the teepees so we could check them out. This place is absolutely stunning. It's uh, a lot more beautiful than I remember it. Just got to Newspaper Rock. Don't know what it is, so uh, let's go check it out. Newspaper Rock isn't just a single rock. It's a series of rocks within close quarters containing over 600 petroglyphs. The petroglyphs span generations, varying in age between 650 to 2,000 years old. Hard to see with the naked eye, stationary binoculars are set up to assist those wishing to have a closer look. All right, made it to our next stop. Let's see, the village on the Rio Puerco. Okay, so right from the get-go, it's pretty, uh, pretty clear it's Native American ruins. See that mound right there? That's uh, obviously man-made very cool i don't think i stopped at this one last time so i'm glad i did this time the village on the rio puerco or puerco pueblo is a hundred plus room pueblo site situated near the rio puerco river an important water source for inhabitants of its time corn beans and squash were all farmed along the river's floodplains the one story high sandstone village was built around a rectangular corridor Around the year 1300, it housed as many as 200 people. Well, this is obviously restored to a certain degree, but still very cool. Though only a generation later, the land was abandoned, likely due to climate change and prolonged drought. Very cool. Uh, again, it looks like there was a certain degree of restoration done here, just to kind of give people a synopsis of structural uh, layouts and whatnot. Very cool nonetheless, though. I mean. You're walking in the steps of uh, Native Americans many years ago. All right, made it to the next stop. It's uh, the old car. Give a little history on that. There's a lot of people there right now, so I'll probably wait for it to clear out. The car may be old, but the exhibit is relatively new. All right, made it to the famous old car. Check it out. Donated in 2006 and placed strategically to commemorate where the old Route 66 traveled through Petrified Forest National Park, the rusted out 1932 Studebaker has quickly become a favorite photo opportunity among park visitors. I'd say it's not quite an operating order, maybe a few grand. Get it back on the road, what do you guys think? Agate Bridge is comprised of both a historic building and a natural, petrified log bridge. Alright guys, we're here at uh, Agate Bridge, another one of the many stops in Petrified National Forest, and we're at Agate Bridge Contact Station right now. Completed in May 1935, the building served as a breezeway in which families could have picnics and escape the sun while enjoying the views. It looks like, uh, looks like there's an overlook right out here, so we're going to come check that out. I don't know how I managed to have this to myself, but I'll take it. The famous petrified log bridge was formed over a very long period of time. The log sat on ground level, however, hundreds of years of flooding washed out the sandstone arroyo beneath it, forming what is now a petrified bridge. It is absolutely gorgeous out here, and I can't believe I have this place to myself right now. Uh, I'm going to stay a little bit longer and just enjoy it until someone comes along. Just gorgeous, wow. 
In 1911, there was a concern the log would eventually give away. Masonry pillars were erected for its support. In 1917, they were replaced by the concrete that exists today. I came across a series of overlooks, all within a stone's throw of each other. I took a brief moment at each of them before moving on. Oh, this is like a mini Grand Canyon. This is pretty cool. Look at the uh, red coloration on the rocks there. Just amazing. I believe that's from iron deposits. Could be wrong. Just when I thought the views couldn't get any better, I came across Tawa Point, which offers a hiking trail and absolutely stunning views of the basin. Looks like this uh, trail only runs about a half a mile, so it's not really much of a trail, but we'll take a quick walk. Wow. It's incredible. You know, when I hear people talk about amazingly beautiful parks in Arizona, places to visit in Arizona, you don't really think a petrified national forest is like a super beautiful park like the Grand Canyon, but I mean, it really is. I mean, check this out. I'd say petrified national forest is definitely underrated for its beauty. People just think, oh, petrified wood, cool. There's way more to it than that. Way more. I mean, this scenery is just breathtaking. I saved one stop for the very last, Blue Mesa. A scenic overlook with a fun hike. Its beautiful views are a favorite for photographers who visit the park. But for me, this visit was something very different. Alright, heading on a little trail to a log that I did last time I was here. When you have a place with certain memories attached to it, memories that you wish to move on from, the best way to do that is to go there and rewrite those memories and start fresh. There was a log that I needed to sit on, to reflect, and to let go of old memories, to say goodbye, and to look brightly to the future. Uh, last time I was here, I walked to this log up here, and I filmed it, but I didn't use the film. I wanted to reshoot, uh, I wanted to reshoot this place, so that's why I'm back. Anyway, back at the log that, uh, that I was at the first time. Life isn't about status, material possessions, and keeping up with the Joneses. There's no amount of money that will change my passion. I yearn to explore, to push myself in the process, and to live every second of this beautiful thing called life to its absolute fullest. Last time I was here seems like a lifetime ago, in a lot of different aspects, actually. But I'm glad I'm back. Oh, God.